Hey everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast, where Zany is going to be calling today the Mac Cast, the, the loser. He's losing, using a Mac. I'm sorry, I couldn't even make it like three seconds into this thing without making fun of you for using a Mac. I would Mac. expect no less. This is actually the Linux Cast. We're supposed to be using Linux to record this, but loser over there is not actually using Linux. I don't know what the hell's wrong with him. Uh, it's going to be one of those days where I just make incredible fun of Tyler. I'm Matt. He's Tyler. He's using a Mac. What the hell is he using a Mac for? Matt, what, what the hell are you using a Mac for? Explain to us. Why are you using a Mac? Um, well, my graphics card died and sort of the power supply. And so it was going to be more expensive to get those two parts to fix my main machine compared to this M1 Mac. And I had a buddy talk me into it. And he's like, because, yeah, I mean. friend him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he uh, he is more of an Apple user uh, in general, which I... I, 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 sh I should have known better, but I was <laughs> like, eh, I'll go ahead and give it a shot because I can go return it if I don't like it. And um, even though I can't run Linux on it and I'm not the biggest fan of Mac, um, really all I want to get done is work in Blender and work on my game. And it has amazed me in what it can do. It can handle me running like uh, Blender and Unity streaming all at the same time, um, running my game at uh, 60 FPS, um, if not a little bit of stuttering, which I can't fault it for. It's literally emulating both Unity and Blender and OBS. Um, so it's, it's pretty good, and it's surprised me that Apple has made a price-competitive product. Um, that being said, I'd love to get Linux on it. I just would. You're using a Mac. <laughs> You're using a Mac, bro. I'm just saying. Like, I'm still 20 minutes ago, still kind of like stuck on that point that you're using a Macintosh right now to record a Linux podcast. It, it, it's it's sacrilegious. Yeah, it's, it's uh, <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> it's what it is. I, I feel like people have been burned at the stake for this. <laughs> so I would ask you what you've been doing on Linux this week, but obviously you haven't done shit on Linux. <laughs> no, it's it's also been I haven't almost even used a computer in a week. I've just been using my phone and getting a lot of like caught up on a lot of housework mm -hmm. because uh, when my, those parts died initially, I thought it was my motherboard. That was the problem. And then got the new motherboard and it's not the problem. Further diagnosis led to it's the power supply and graphics card. So yeah. yeah. Hmm. Well, so we can't ask you what you're doing. What I've been doing on Linux this week is dying because I, <laughs> I installed Pipewire on this machine. Okay, so I'm blaming that, that a little bit. But mostly, I plugged in an Elgato cam link like two weeks ago to try to record some Fedora for the channel on my laptop, you know, recording it over here. And ever since that point, things have just been fucking up left and right. <laughs> so the audio has, I mean, has been horrible because it... It keeps switching between input sources for whatever reason. So I go to record a video, and I get through halfway through the video, and I realize the entire time I've not been recording on this microphone that actually sounds really good. You know, it costs lots of money. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. You know, it's been recording on this crappy ten-year-old microphone from the the webcam. It's the the <laughs> like, come on, Linux. Linux, you're forty years old. Okay, it's time. <laughs> To grow up, it's time to get audio that works, and Pipewire is not the solution. We'll talk about Pipewire, that's the main topic for this week, but, uh, I, I mean, we, we had our own problems last week. We recorded this episode <laughs> once already on someone who's using Pipewire, and OBS crashed. And, and so, we didn't have Tyler's audio last week, so I ha had my own problems with audio because my audio was like really low. I was like really talking like, like this. It wasn't very much talk. <laughs> and, and it sounded like Jackass over there using the Mac was fucking, uh, <laughs> was, was shouting in the microphone and I could not get the audio levels to work. So we record this, we recorded this last week. So that was the audio problems. And, and then I'm also been having video problems. Like every time I open up OBS, there's no video. There's none. Uh, like it, 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 it feels like something else is using. Like you know how when uh, something else is using your webcam and OBS won't show up yeah. in video, it's like that. Yeah. Only there's nothing else using the webcam. I have to shut 
OBS down and open it back up for the webcams to show up. It's the dumbest thing. It's driving me bonkers. And and just to be clear, you're not using Wayland, right? No, no, no. I'm on DWM uh, okay. in Arch, like using okay. yeah, you know, XOR. So it's <laughs> it has nothing to do with uh, like I. The thing is. It almost certainly the the video thing almost has to be a compositor problem because I've been having a compositor issue with PyCom, where sometimes my the the stuff on the screen just kind of like has a seizure for like five seconds and like everything like jumps around like it's like it's being electrocuted. It's really weird. Uh, it's, it's it's just don't use Linux, use Mac. <laughs> I guess it's the, the, the thing we need to talk about here. This is so dumb. I, I haven't had this m- many Linux problems ever. Like, I, I, like everyone talks when you first switch to Linux, you have problems because you don't know what the hell you're doing. I never had those issues. You know, the biggest issue I had when I first switched to Linux was the, UE, the UEFI shit, right? And mm-hmm. that had nothing to do with Linux. That was just me trying to figure out how to switch from UE, UEFI to legacy BIOS. Right, that was the no. biggest issue I ever had. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, I mean, I had other issues that were me- caused by me being a dumbass, but those never had anything to do with Linux. Mm-hmm. This time, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's been a whole week, like a week and a half, of just nothing working right. And I used to when this start, when, like when I when I would have a problem that came from an update or something like that i was just you know fuck it i'm going to go through i'm gonna nuke and pay i'm gonna put something else i'm gonna distro hop i've mm-hmm. tried so hard not to do that because i like my setup right now i have you know mm-hmm. all my window managers installed i have all my dot files the way i want them to go to i have all the apps that i need it's it's so good but there's these little things right now that are just pissing me off and nothing's working right <laughs> it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's almost driven me to switch to a mac <laughs> no, I'm just kidding about that. I never do that. Uh, at least one of us on this oh, podcast that I know is for still sure. using Linux. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, we, we can't we can't both leave now. We'd have see, to change the, the name. Thing. We'd have to change the name of the channel. Oh, It'll we'd have the, to for sure. MacCast. I'm sure that already exists. <laughs> well, I the one thing I will say though is I don't know if it's it, it may be something to do with Arch because for the first time ever. Um, right before my computer had all of its complete issues, I tried installing um, Arch uh, going from Fedora back to Arch. And after the most like recent update where they added like multiple downloads and you know stuff like that, um, uh, Pycom was just, I mean, like not working at all for me. Like I had it installed and I was, you know, executing it um, through my um, Xnet RC file and it just like it, it was like, it didn't exist. Um, and there was, I can't remember what the other issue that I was having was, but there was another just small quirk that wasn't working right after the latest update. But I will say one thing with Arch, normally when that stuff happens, just the next day, if you update it, it's fixed. So I have 220 updates waiting for me right now. I'm kind of scared to update because I'm just worrying (laughs) something's going to go break because I've seen some chatter in the telegram group for Arco where they're having some problems. Like, I don't know if I want to update right now or not, uh, especially when I'm already having issues. But I will say this, the the simultaneous downloads in Pac-Man, oh, so good, man. Yes. <laughs> it's so good. I was like, yes. I installed a program, and I was like, usually I would have to, you know, I go back to the browser, go to back to YouTube or whatever, wait for it to, do- and I was like, it's done. Like, what? Ooh. Wait, what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's so good. Um but if it's like I've got fast internet here, and with with those multiple downloads, like fast internet makes me feel like I've got fiber. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It looks like <laughs> like I've like got FiOS in this bitch, right? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, that was the weekend Mac, as or as Tyler's going to call it. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump to the 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 um, whatever the hell we call it, the contact information. Oh, uh, God, this is horrible. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and all that kind of stuff. It's at LinuxCast.org. That will eventually be a website. I'm just a lazy bastard. Haven't gotten around to it. You can follow. You can contact us on email, uh, the LinuxCast at gmail.com. Again, eventually we'll have a proper email address. Uh, 
again, much too lazy. Facebook.com slash LinuxCast. You can follow uh, Tyler on all of his stuff on Odyssey and YouTube. Links will be in the video description or in uh, the show notes. And you can subscribe to us on YouTube at YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. Also, link in the description. And you can support us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash LinuxCast. So, each and every week... We choose two news links, one each, and this week is no different. So, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and tell us which your news link is? Well, my news link hasn't changed from the original one that I put in there when we tried to record it the first time. But it's uh, Linux Mint adds bulk uh, adds a bulk rename tool and um, also improved file search, um, which. I just thought the bulk rename tool was a pretty neat feature for new users. I mean, like, let's be honest, Linux Mint very much is targeted towards new Linux users. And small tools like this um, are great for new users because when you're when you're not an advanced, you know, user and you're also on a new platform, um, like Linux that you're unfamiliar with, easy to use, um, tools like this for, you know, when you're doing those bigger or more specific tasks, um, are great. And I can attest to one thing. Mac has a much worse file system and does not have nifty tools like this just built in. Um, I, I was talking about it before we started pressing record or before we pressed record and started, but um, in Mac, I don't know out of the default, like maybe some crazy Mac user can explain why this is a thing, but they default the file system to, or file browser to where you can just create files and store them anywhere and you can stack them over one another. There's no organization or like grid or anything to the file browser from the get go. That is the dumbest thing, and it's so annoying, and you have to manually select, like, sort by a grid in every single folder on your system. There's a whole bunch of things about Mac that I, I'm i not a big fan of, and I think Linux Mint, for those people out there who are considering a Linux distro, um, yeah, Linux has a much better file system than Mac, especially than Windows, so uh, what do you? Uh, what's your opinion on this article here? All right, so... I think it's probably a good thing, but it also re- reminds me of why I don't care for the Mint developers all that much. They always seem to duplicate efforts so much. Uh, mm-hmm. Always trying to do something new that doesn't really need to be done. So, like, their file manager is called Nemo. I love Nemo. I think it's the best file manager, but it didn't need to exist. Thunar exists, right? Mm-hmm. They could have forked Thunar and just made Nemo out of that and, you know, done some their own stuff, but it doesn't seem like they did that. It seems like they did Nemo from the ground up. Uh, But the reason why I say Thunar is because Thunar comes with a bulk file manager. It's not built in. It's like a separate application. It just, every time you install Thunar, you get this thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And this is not that. This is actually something that they built from the ground up. Uh, At least that's what this article says. And (laughs) I just don't understand. I, I don't understand their need to duplicate effort i mean it's a big problem in all of linux dumb you know where developers just like well i don't like really what you're doing so i'm going to do this thing from the ground up like mm-hmm. fine uh you're perfectly okay doing that but it, it seems like a waste of time yeah. especially especially when- go ahead yeah go ahead uh well like for big developers like linux mint like yeah. when you're catering to a huge community duplicating effort like that it's just like Everyone views your time like whether or not the developers view their time as valuable, the community views their time as valuable. And when you're spending that valuable time making something that you could have just copied from somewhere, like I mean, it's it's free software. That's what it's there for. Copy it, do what you want to do to it, and in much shorter time, and then go about your life. Like I would understand. I, like this is why I preach on them to switch to LMDE as the the primary. Because at least that they want to create something original, right? And while, yes, you're going to still be basing on Debian, it, what you're doing when you're basing yourself on Ubuntu is just you're, you're, you're basing yourself on a copy of a copy. Like, mm-hmm. Ubuntu itself is based on Debian. 
if Linux Mint was based themselves on Debian and built their stuff from the ground up, like they seem to want to do, they should just do it. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it would be there would be a painful transition period because it's not quite there yet, and it doesn't have the support of Canonical behind it. You know, because Canonical does all the snaps and all that kind of stuff. And but Linux Mint doesn't use the Snap Store anyways. They use flat, they, I think they use flat packs, but no matter it's it it just always feels like they're focusing their development time on things that they don't really need to do because everything like that kind of just it exists and if you have other ideas like you said fork it and make it your own you know mm-hmm. and, and, and unless it's like completely different than i mean it'd be different if this bulk rename tool did something other than what other bulk rename tools did but it doesn't it just bulk renames files that's all it does yeah right it doesn't yeah. it's not as if you've come up with some kind of special sauce you know that does yeah. this thing better than all the others it, it, it's not i mean maybe it's a little bit faster but you, again you could have forked something that was already there made it your own and slapped your name on it i mean that's what they seem to want to do uh you know and mm-hmm. that'd be fine it just it's this kind of thing that always you know i don't know if i really like mint you know like i like yeah. the, i like the cinnamon desktop but uh, Again, the Cinnamon Desktop... Fe- it, all right, so th- at least with the Cinnamon Desktop, it feels like they took what's good about Mate and made it modern. Like, it makes it feel like it, there was a purpose behind mm-hmm. the Cinnamon Desktop, right? But with, so with some of their other stuff, it just... It feels like complete duplication of effort. And it's, it, it's some kind of just like... Like, I don't know if I want to even be around those guys. Their, their weirdness might, you know, spread. You know, yeah. So. Well, it, it's it's just very like I've never really thought about it that way. But you're you're very right. Like what they choose to um, be unique about is it makes no sense. Like if you if you want to be completely unique, do your own thing from the ground up. Wouldn't you start with like the foundation of your distribution, not just the small little programs that everyone's going to use all the time that most likely has already been implemented for like 20 years. Yeah. And you know, uh, yeah. Like so. dear Linux mint, you want to do something original fix audio on Linux. <laughs> like dude, seriously, <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah, go fix audio on Linux. Everybody would love you. I mean, seriously, they would have your babies. <laughs> That's how much they would love you. Like seriously, I don't like audio is broken on Linux. I mean, for the, uh, we know that well, at least audio works for the most part. Like we can use audio. We're, okay, we're using audio right now, but there are so many of these little n- problems that just break for everyone, from time mm-hmm. to time. Go out there, Linux Mint, fix it. Okay, we will love you forever. <laughs> but but stop. There'd be shrines that. built. <laughs> right? Seriously, we will worship you like the gods. But <laughs> they don't do that. They they make IPTV applications and they make Belk Reader name stuff that, you know, I have my problems with the Fedora people and the, the guys behind Gnome and Pipewire and Wayland. I, I, I can understand why Wayland exists. I can understand why Pipewire exists. I don't think, and we're going to talk about this later, I don't think that they're going about it the right way with Pipewire. But at least them, they're taking problems that we know exist and they're fixing it. Not so much with mm-hmm. GNOME, but with Wayland, Wayland and, and, and Pipewire, yeah. right? You know, it, with the Linux Mint, they're just like, we're going to take something that already exists perfectly, works perfectly fine, make our own version of it, and spend time doing that, and uh, ignore the other problems that Linux <laughs> seems to have. Like, like, put your development... I mean, it would be different if they were just regular developers. Like, if they were just, like, like you said, I mean, they're running Linux Mint is probably the second biggest Linux distribution out there in terms of Linux users. Like, like obviously Ubuntu has all of them. And then there's going to be Linux Mint. Those are the, for at least for new users, it's very, very big. And it, it, you're right. It does feel like we value their time more than they do. Mm-hmm. And it also seems to piss, like, the, the Clem guy who, who runs it, it, fe- it feels like this stuff kind of stuff always pisses him off. Like, he always is getting so mad at Ubuntu and... And, you know, all this other stuff and people not doing their updates and stuff like that. Well, that's good to be mad about it, but don't do... I mean, 
you're leading the team, man. Don't let them focus on this kind of stuff. Let them focus on the big stuff. All right. Anyways, <coughs> I'm getting very worked up, and it's all your fault because you're using a Mac. Uh, I mean, I just, of course. <laughs> all right. So um, my uh, news thing for this week, if I can actually get this thing up here, yeah, is that Firefox 89 arrived with quote unquote from OMG Ubuntu a controversial new look so uh, I'm actually going to not show I, I'm showing the article on screen right now but I'm actually going to change to Firefox right now with no cameras on screen so you can just see this while we talk um, just for a minute um, and this is what Firefox looks like now and then I'm going to switch back to this the split because I don't know if the audio will actually work <laughs> I don't know if I have the proper audio sources set up on that particular sc <laughs> scene, and I don't want to mess that up. Uh, but, yeah, so Firefox has a brand new design. It's pissed a lot of people off. Some people kind of like it. Uh, I still use user chrome.css, so I don't give a sh I don't give any shits. Uh, it still looks fine for me. Uh, I have other problems with Firefox, uh, mainly that it doesn't actually browse the web properly anymore. But, uh, hey, like, you have one job. You have one job. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so there's this... They got these gigantic-ass tabs up at the top. If you use this without mm. and you know any CSS tweaking. And it is... It's pretty ugly. Um, yeah. I think that they're trying to do this to uh, differentiate themselves from Chrome to make it look completely different. But I got to tell you, Firefox, the reason why people aren't using Firefox has nothing to do with what you look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that, literally. So I, uh, I'm using Firefox right now because, good lord, I mean Safari works, but barely. Um, I'm not. I don't have any problems with the new UI. Uh, I don't. I mean, I think the older version looked better, but either way, I don't have really a problem. It's just different, in my opinion, but. You hit the, head, the the nail on the head there. Um, it doesn't matter. the The UI is the least of my worries when it comes to fire. I mean, if I had a problem with the UI, I could, like you said, use CS. I can change it. It's it's not that big of a deal. the The problem with Firefox has to do with everything that they're choosing to do as a corporation. Mm -hmm. Like that's really it. Firefox doesn't need a UI change. Firefox needs a clear direction and they make need it to known. Fire about five hundred people, including like the CEO and all those executives, and go back to being just a browser company. <laughs> That's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Every time we talk about Firefox, we talk about how uh, how does this how does this comp corporation uh, employ a thousand people? Like, mm -hmm. what is <laughs> like? I don't understand. Uh, like, they get they they make they make no money, right? We know this. They make zero dollars right mm -hmm. in fact they make negative dollars is what they make <laughs> like somehow they end up losing money even though they get 400 million dollars every 10 years from google and they take that money and they do a redesign every four years that seems to be where they spend their money and they they also seem to like i'm really happy that the thousand people who work for mozilla have jobs i'm never one to say mm -hmm. you want to know what Let's not give these people jobs. Let's kick them out on their asses. Like, I don't really want to be that guy. But Mozilla is perhaps the most important foundation when it comes to open source software. It's, it's, it, it may be the one corporate or one foundation, you know, one. Uh, I'm going to call it a corporation, but whatever. It, you know, it's, it's the one entity in open source that has the chance to spread open source software beyond Linux and all this. Like Linux itself is never going to get below, above 5% market share. It's just never going to happen. You know, uh, you know, other things that are open source and stuff like that, it's always going to be very small. But Firefox had the opportunity to be the bastion of open source for normal people because people want different options other than Chrome. I mean... At least technological people, they want something other than Chrome, or at least at one point they wanted that, right? Yeah. They've lost that opportunity, and mm -hmm. the way they're running right now, they have no chance of getting that opportunity back because they're focused on weird shit. 
You know, yeah, like, 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 they're they're focused on the stuff that doesn't matter. Like, let's start let's start a VPN. Like I understand the need to figure out how to get a different revenue stream other than Google, but all right. Tomorrow, I'm going to be the CEO of Firefox. My first task is going to be really hard. I'm going to fire a ton of people. Like, everybody mm -hmm. that is unnecessarily sorry, you're going to be gone. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to write you glowing letters. Are you taking a salary cut? Oh, I'm... I'm yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm going to take a salary cut. <laughs> Pay me $100,000, man. I'm good. I don't need to be paid $4 million a year. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I want $4 million a year, but $100,000... Perfectly fine. That's good you, money. You want to know what? Fine. You want to know what? You don't want to get paid a hundred thousand dollars a year? Fine. Two hundred thousand dollars a year. Double it. You know that. that even <laughs> that's that, still acceptable. Like, like, it, like it's fine. For, to, I think she makes like two million. I think it was. I think it's. Uh, I think it's her. I don't. I don't even know. I can't remember what her, uh, the CEO's name is. Uh, it doesn't matter. All I know is they pissed me off. Uh, they like two point <laughs> three million dollars. I think was their salary. Some some crazy number. Like mm -hmm. you want? Oh come on, that's reasonable. No, I'm okay. sure she has to work <laughs> I, I'm enough sure for it. I'm sure she really hard for that money that she didn't earn. Uh, <laughs> like like, like you, your your corporation makes no money. You don't get to pay yourself that amount of money. You mm. just don't. Okay. Like I'm not, I understand. You have kids to feed. Whatever. You don't need that much money to feed your kids. Walmart is perfect. No. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, I, I don't even think Octo Mom needs that much money to feed her kids. Like, you know, if it'd been five hundred thousand dollars a year, I mean, yeah, it seems a little excessive. But I don't think anybody would care about five hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. But you're a CEO of the biggest right. open source browser that in existence, right? Right. So five hundred k, fine. So I'm I, I'm the CEO to, starting tomorrow. Uh, I'm cutting my my salary down to a hundred k. You know, fine. I'm, I'm, to me, a hundred thousand dollars a year sounds. Oh, like, ooh, I've got some money to spend, boy. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. like, like, that's, that's great. I made twenty k last year. I'm bumping that up by five. You know, yeah. Uh, so, so maybe, maybe it's my perspective that's saying like a oh, hundred thousand dollars is perfectly fine. But you know, whatever. Even if you're living in New York at at a hundred thousand dollars a year, you can pay your rent, buy buy groceries, still have money to save, and. I mean, depending on how many kids you have, if you've yeah. got plenty of kids, well, I mean, then that might be tight. But you're not going to be living like Donald Trump, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but, but you're not starving, and yeah. you're not in some rundown, right, crappy right. apartment. At a, at a hundred thousand dollars, you make more than the vast majority of people in the in, in this country, vast majority of people in the world. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> pay cut number one: fire like eighty percent of the people, like at Mozilla, right? Like day one. Like I, I'm sorry, I'm running. I'm writing you recommendations, uh, you know, but you're gone. Sorry, we don't need yeah. you. We're, we we do a browser. Two hundred people to to code a browser, plenty of people. Okay, mm -hmm. like, that, that, that's cutting the workforce by like, you know, seventy percent. Once that's done, get rid of every single extraneous project that isn't named Firefox. Like every one of them. Uh, I, like I'm pretty sure Thunderbird's already on its own. But any other projects that we don't know about, because they're there, we just don't know about them. Get rid of them. The VPN, everything, it's gone. Okay, those are the, those are the restructuring things that I do day one. And then those two hundred people that are left, make me a browser that browses the internet. <laughs> okay, this, <laughs> this is the one job you have to do. Okay, make me a browser that browses the internet, the same as Chrome does, but isn't Chrome. Okay, I don't want to be using Blink, but I just want you to go through and make sure that it's completely compatible with everything that Blink does uh, in an open way, you know, and just do mm -hmm. that. Focus on that. Don't go through and redesign the damn tabs. We don't need you to redesign to design the tabs. It's so dumb. I get so upset um, with Firefox. I think the only thing that I would add on to that, I don't know if... You just weren't thinking about this and would definitely add this on, but I'm definitely going to say a part of that plan would be after you've removed those those employees, because you have to think some of them are going to have um, severances, uh, like severance packages, stuff like that. So you're going to have to go to the board and be like, okay, look, so we're technically sort of losing money right now, but this is a huge marketing push because what we're going to do after all these people are gone, we are just focusing on the browser and we're going to make a massive PR marketing campaign about us 
cutting like cutting extraneous projects and just focusing on making the best browser possible. Yes. Make a good browser and then buy some TV time with that four hundred million dollars. You know, because you know what we never see is an advertisement for Firefox. You're right. You know, You're like, right. You never see an advertisement for Firefox. You know, let, let's screw everything I just said. Uh, even if Firefox is just the way it is, let's take some of that money and advertise for it now. You know, mm-hmm. I like I'm like that's the one thing Linux doesn't have, do at all very good. Like mm-hmm. actually doesn't do it at all. It's just period. It doesn't do marketing. Like, if you mm-hmm. used it just, a, just a, a tiny bit of market marketing for, for Firefox, people would, you know, go check it out. They may not stick around, but some of them would, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> like, like uh, I'm a stupid guy, okay? Like, I, I, I can tell you that my, I, my, my intelligence is definitely not on par with, like, Einstein or whatever. I'm, like, I don't have that kind of ego. I, I'm well aware of my limitations, but it feels like, and maybe this is just arrogance on my part, but it feels like... Solving Firefox's problems, it, it, at least th- what I perceive as their problems, is would be so easy. <laughs> like like, mm-hmm. like these th- these things seem so obvious to me, but apparently they're not that obvious to them because they're too busy paying the CEO millions of dollars a year to do what? I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure they have like a COO and a CTO and all an entire board of executives that make millions of dollars. And that's where the four hundred thousand, four hundred million dollars every ten years is going. Like it's not going to the average Firefox developer. He probably gets paid sixty or seventy thousand dollars a year. <laughs> like he yep. can make way much, way more money going to Google, and and that's probably what most of them end up doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's sort of the problem. We're we're talking about Firefox, Firefox playing the long game, and they're playing the short game. How do we how do we pay? Like our employees and our board of directors and all that stuff, the most money this year, yeah. and that shouldn't be the focus. We, we've spent way too much time on Firefox. We have. We really <laughs> like, have. Like, I don't know if you know this, but we've been going for a half an hour already. This is going to be an hour and a half show. We haven't even got to the main all fucking right. topic yet. All right, we got to go. To, what? Is, what is even? What? what yeah. The pipe ne- wire. Yeah. The next. The next topic is pipeware. So. Oh, we set ourselves a challenge. We were both going to install Fedora, which we did, and we both decided to use Pipewire uh, at least some amount of time for a week. And it's actually ended up being two weeks for me. You're using a Mac. Mm. Um, <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that you're using a Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Can't forget. Uh, I am a traitor. But he did He did install Fedora. I know he did because he's made videos about it and showed stuff. Uh, but... So that was our challenge, was to use Pipewire on a computer for some amount of time for a week. Like I said, it ended up being two weeks for me. Uh, and we've had we've had some experiences with it. So your experience was pretty good. So why don't you tell us about your experience with Pipewire? Yeah, my experience with Pipewire um, was on Fedora, using Wayland as well, and it was a it was. It was good. Everything just worked. Um, the only issues I had with Pipewire were the same sort of issues I had with Pulse, um, except just um, I didn't have the extra issues that came, you know, randomly with Pulse. Um, but the um, the audio levels or like my settings for the audio devices being either reset or just their audio levels not being exactly where I put them um, after a reboot. Um, that was still there. But other than that, it worked. Um, I don't know if Pipewire was the reason OBS crashed while we were recording, but it, I mean, OBS was working with Pipewire. I was able to record audio at, it just, it, it worked. Um, so Pipewire was good for me on Fedora. Tell me your experience. <laughs> All right. I, I will start there as well. Pipewire was good for me on Fedora. And I actually have been using it pretty, uh, like Fedora, I still have Fedora on my laptop. I've still been using it. And mm. I love how good it does it connecting Bluetooth devices. Like it, it will, it detects my Bluetooth headphones, connects them. Like on Pulse, you always have to go through and like go get into Pulse, the Pulse, the PAVU control, and change. Every time you connect to Bluetooth, you have to change what type of Bluetooth it is between a headset and a 
like a high fidelity thing. You have to do that every mm-hmm. time. It doesn't remember. Oh, on, fun. In Pipewire, it remembers. Like, you don't even have to set it. It just knows that you're, you've connected headphones. Obviously, if you connect headphones, you want to listen to music. You don't want to hear, like, a car, like, the car speaker or whatever. It's really bad. It worked really well. And I was very, very happy with that. Now, once you've moved away from Fedora, <laughs> the experience <laughs> is much different. Now, I will say this. The extra week that we had because of problems was actually good because I did actually manage to get Pipewire working a little better. So Pipewire, the the way Pipewire works, it kind of works in conjunction with Alsa and Pulse Audio. Like those things don't go necessarily go away. It's kind of, it takes those things and it kind of like bridges everything together and it's supposed to kind of interlock them and make them work better, at least on these type of systems, right? And it kind of does that. Uh, But installing it was a pain in the ass. Getting it up and running was a pain in the ass. Uh, and once it did get up and running, things broke like crazy. Uh, and I don't know whether I did something wrong, which is you know, obviously 100% possible. I mean, I do things wrong all the time. Uh, but once it was up and running, things... To, like, the audio kept switching sources. I don't know whether or not that was a Pulse Audio thing that was still happening, or like a legacy thing, or uh, if it was the pipe wire that was going crazy. Uh, and, the th- and the thing is... I was only ever able to use Pipewire when I was in a desktop environment because if you want tools to change like volume and stuff like that, you have to have those tools built in. And all those things are all GTK or acute right now. They're all Mm -hmm. built into a desktop environment. Using it in a window manager was not an easy thing. Like you have to have those things installed. Once you have them installed, you can open those things up in like DWM or whatever. And it will mm. work, work-ish. Uh, but you know, it, I, like I said, I don't know like the, the problems I was having. I don't know whether or not it was, you know, a me problem or if it is a problem with Pipewire. And so I also had problems where in OBS, every once in a while, it would just like randomly switch sources. Uh, like once in a while, I would just go through and be talking, and then it would switch to. You know, like the the microphone on my camera, or there was one time, I think it was after the last update, it was playing both of them. <laughs> like you could hear both <laughs> microphones going at the same time, and it was it's really weird now. You because you can really tell at least once you move away from Fedora that Pipewire is still very much in development. Uh, it's not mm-hmm. something that you want to use unless you're on Fedora. Like I said, on Fedora, it worked really well. But I don't know how well it would work on Fedora in like a different desktop environment because it's really, really built, uh, very like tightly integrated with the GNOME stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't, I haven't had a chance to go through and actually install a desktop environment, a different desktop D over there. I wanted to try to install uh, DWM. I just haven't had a chance yet because um, I'm really curious how um, how that would work outside of GNOME because all this stuff is really meant to be working together. And it mm-hmm. just, when when you try to take that piece out and use it with something else, at least so far in my experience, it hasn't been fantastic. Yeah. It's just odd. Like, Pipewire is sort of a, its own thing in that sort of regard where most programs, like, they're, especially when it comes to Linux and FOSS software, they work between window managers, desktop environments. I mean, almost... All, all the time without issues. Pipewire, it's so weird that, like, if you're using Fedora precisely the way, like, vanilla Fedora, the way Fedora dev- devs want you to, you're going to have a fine experience. You you try and do anything outside of the norm, and you're most likely going to have some, some some hard times. It, it's just unique in that way. I think the biggest problem, and I said this last week, too, is that the, the tools that support port uh, pipe wire just aren't really there yet. Now you can, like, because Pulse Audio is technically still there, you can use a lot of the Pulse Audio stuff. But you're not meant to, like, it, it, at least from what I can figure out is that, like, in order to change the volume and stuff like that, you have to go through and, like, you have to use your, like, your system settings to do that, and then your system settings is kind of, like, provides a conduit for other, like, widgets and stuff that go in your, like, in your bar or whatever that will control your volume and stuff. 
Uh, and that stuff just doesn't exist like standalone for pipe wire. Like think, uh, tools like PAVU control and pulse mixer and stuff like that. That stuff was also built for pipe wire. And like I said, while that stuff will technically still work, at least it did for me, uh, and I'm assuming that maybe that's one of the reasons why I was still having some problems because I had all this legacy stuff still crudding up my computer and maybe that was having some problems. I Like, I don't really know. Uh, but it, it just feels like there's some tools that in development there that just hasn't been, uh, you know, you, it, it's just still being worked on. Like, it's not... No. It's not there yet. Um, so I don't... I don't see this being... Like, this may be the future. Like, I, I think we've gotten to the point now where we can pretty much say Wayland is going to be the future of Linux. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen now that Ubuntu has adopted it. Like, Ubuntu mm-hmm. is like the... Once once Apple adopts something in, in you know, the, the technology world, they... That, like, they got rid of the floppy drive first. Then everybody got rid of the floppy drive. They got rid of, uh, you know, USB-A ports. Now everybody uses USB-C. The, the same thing with the... Uh, Thunderbolt and all that stuff. Uh, Canonical is kind of the same way. When they adopt something, everybody else follows. Uh, yep. Uh, so we know Wayland is going to be like the future. Whether or not Pipeware gets to that point, I don't know. I really like. I understand Pulse Audio is like really old, but why can't we just fix Pulse Audio? You know, like, like I know. Like, like why can't I? I... <coughs> Excuse me. Like, I just don't, like, I'm not a developer, so I understand that my idea behind solving some of these problems and probably, I, I'm sure it's been tried, right? Like, I'm sure they've tried to fix Pulse Audio, and that there's yeah. just something there that's keeping them from perfecting it. Because there has to be a reason why we're 40 years into the Linux experiment, and we still haven't solved the ba- most basic of problems. Like, we got the display thing down. We got the X server down, and that's been working for a long time. Like, there's X org has its problems, and it's old and crufty. That's the reason why we're replacing it with Wayland. We want to be more secure on that end. Uh, but for whatever reason, in 40 years, we haven't been able to take the audio thing and iron out all the problems. We just haven't been able to do it. Now, is it better than it used to be? Hell yes, it's better than it used to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Like, you can use your computer. Like, it's good. <laughs> like, like, yes, you come up with a little bit of problems, but every once in a while, you know, it's just, <laughs> you come up with these stupid things. Like, like in 40 years, we haven't been able, there has to be some reason why in 40 years we haven't been able to, you know, iron those things out. Whether that's like a, proprietary driver thing like maybe there's like proprietary uh hardware things that we just don't have access to or whatever that's causing the problems and uh, we've had to work work around it and it's buggy because it's a workaround Mm -hmm. maybe that's it Uh, i I, I don't know like the the question i have is if in 40 years we haven't been able to between also and pulse audio if we haven't been able to fix it then what makes us think that this new thing, this new pipe wire thing that just sits on top of everything, mm-hmm. what makes us think that that's actually going to solve the problems that we haven't been able to fix in so long, right? Yeah. And and that's actually what I was going to say, because as far as I know, pipe wire is just like a extra layer for all sudden in Pulse Audio. Like, yeah, it can, re- like, the goal is to replace Pulse Audio and also, but I mean... Right now, as it stands, it has to use both of those. And, like, am I right there? Like, even on Fedora, it's using Pulse Audio for stuff, right? It's very confusing because it's it, there's some kind of like uh, translation layer or something. I think it's not the right term or whatever, but it, the way the Arch Wiki describes it is that it's a daemon based on a framework that can be configured to use both audio, both an audio and video server that uses Pulse Audio and Jack features. So it's like taking some of the things from Pulse Audio and Jack and like mixing them all together. I, I'd like to know what the dependencies for Pulse Audio are. Like I didn't pay attention when I installed this, or PipeWire. I mean, I'm just very curious. Because um, I would assume at least on Arch it's going to require Pulse Audio, but that's the thing about Fedora that I don't know. Like, is Fedora doing something special where? Uh, it's just not having to interact with Pulse Audio whatsoever, and that's why it's a little bit better experience. 
All right, Don't so move. the dependencies for Pipewire are also. Um, you mind show me more? Also, libs, blue libs. Um, I don't see. I don't see Pulse Audio on there as being a, a dependency. Okay. Um, this is from the Arch uh, Linux uh, wiki. But it does require also, also, also is there. Um, for whatever reason, Git is also a dependency. So, but I think that is pretty much for everything. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, so the, the, the question we posed was, is Pipewire ready for mainstream? So your answer would be no, right? No. Yeah, that'd yeah. be my answer as well. No, not quite there. It's better than I thought it would be. Like I, I was, same, I was same. expecting it to be a complete mess, but on Fedora at least, it it works relatively well uh, in ideal circumstances, right? Like within GNOME, within your safe spot, changing nothing, no extensions, any of that stuff, it works fine. Outside of it, your mileage may vary. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be some be somebody in the comments below that knows way more about this kind of stuff that than we do, uh, which not hard i mean <laughs> low bar there fella True. Uh, <laughs> True. Uh, that, that's going to be shouting about oh, you guys don't know anything about pipe wire this doesn't do anything about pipe wire you it's not a layer at all it takes over whatever if you're that person leave that comment whatever it's gonna be okay we understand we're both very much linux noobs that's the point of the fucking podcast <laughs> you know <laughs> so just just chill out we understand we don't know anything um anyway so <laughs> Uh, that is the main topic. Let's go ahead and move on to picks of the week. So, uh, why don't you go ahead and go first, there, Tyler? Your picks. All the right. Week. So mine was RPCS three because Still a good crappy names. Name. <laughs> yep, good <laughs> names don't mean nothing. Um, and it's a open source PlayStation three uh, emulator, um, which is freaking cool um and the one thing about it that also intrigues so uh for one it has a lot of games that work on it and then two it also has a it works on linux windows and bsd i was surprised that it, bsd it, it works on so windows, that's linux and bsd did i hear no macintosh in there is that <laughs> no mac support <laughs> and, oh and that's just sad for you because you're using a mac uh, <laughs> can't let me forget no oh you better you better you better start working on that linux support there man because otherwise this is going to go on for weeks <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, it's it's really cool, and um, it it's su it's surprising how many games work on it. And I just didn't know that PlayStation Three emulation was here and this good. So um, yeah, um, I believe they've got. I think it's like over two thousand um, games that are working on it. Um, I could go through and find the compatibility page. Um, okay, maybe I can't, but yeah. If I wasn't such a horrible... Look, oh, yeah, okay. So, playable, about 2,000. About 1,900 playable games. So, super interesting. Yeah. It, what do you the, think about it? It definitely does look really cool. Um, I tried to th think about this last week, but... I did own a PlayStation 3, and I talked about how I tore it apart and come back, could put it back together. Um, but I don't... PlayStation 3 is weird. Like, it's a generation of console that I don't really remember any of the games for. Uh -huh. like, like, I understand... I'm sure I played some Uncharted, because Uncharted was the game... It's like my favorite game of all time. Like, I, remember, I love that series. So I'm sure that that was one of the games that I played. But I don't... Re Maybe, like, Vice City was a ga PlayStation 3 game... Was Vice? No, that was, I think that was PlayStation Two. Well, I think Vice City was PlayStation Two. I'm PlayStation Three. Uh, I know the PlayStation Three had GTA Five on it. Um, Did it? Yeah. You mean four. No, I think it had five on it. 
I'm pretty sure GTA 5 was on the PS3. Uh, I don't know. It, uh, I'm sure we're getting our times completely wrong. We're probably both completely wrong. Uh, I remember playing the original like Grand Theft Auto 2 on the PlayStation 1. And Grand, PlayStation... Yeah, no, I know for a fact GTA 5 is on the PS3. Uh, I've, I play it with a buddy on, uh, okay. on his PS3. The, I, know, I know Grand Theft Auto 3 was on the PlayStation 2. Um, but after that, I don't really remember. Like, it's, I'm, it's, like I said, the PlayStation 3 is just a really weird console because I don't really remember any of the games that were on it. So, like, I'm sure there was like a Gran Turismo, but we, after Gran Turismo 2, which was on the PlayStation 2, I don't think I played another Gran Turismo until play, Gran Turismo 5, which was on the... That might have been the PlayStation 3. Because I never had a PS4. So it had to have been PlayStation 3, which was Gran Turismo 5. Because I did play it, and I realized, okay, you know, these are the same tracks for racing that were here 10 years ago. <laughs> Just better <laughs> graphics. All right, anyways. Uh, so, um, yeah, this looks really cool. It's definitely something I'm going to check out. I haven't had a ch- chance yet, but that's definitely something. So my pick of the week is something much more boring. Uh, but basically, this is a... Um, a text expander tool. So basically, what this allows you to do, it's called a Spanso, and it allows you to go through and set like uh, like little shortcuts that you type in, and then it will expand the text uh, to whatever you've set it. Like it's configured through a configuration file, so it's not a GUI thing, but it runs in the background. Every time you type in the things that you have set, it will expand out. So I have one set, so that every time I t- type a certain thing in, it'll expand out into all the stuff I have to put into every video description. So like the, the Patreon and all that stuff. Um, and it also do the, it has one for the date. It has one for a couple email signatures. And, it, you know, I'm always looking for little things that I can put into it. It's really cool. Um, obviously free and open source. It works really well uh, if you're okay getting into a configuration file to set it up. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you don't, or if you're, not, if you're not comfortable getting into a .yaml file in order to actually type in the, expansion stuff then you're kind of out of luck because unlike text expander on the macintosh which you could use now because you're using a mac uh, <laughs> um yeah uh unlike that it this doesn't have a gui that you can do it's all done from the command line so that's definitely going to be something that uh, now i might be in, it's possible that there's like a gui tool that actually exists and i just didn't find it but i don't think that that's true uh, but it is available for Windows and Mac. So if you don't want to pay for Text Expander, uh, you could use this instead. So <laughs> that is Espanso. And that is the podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. We did get this done in an hour. Uh, granted, we spent more time on Firefox and uh, the the news items uh, than we did on the actual main topic. But that's okay. Uh <laughs> It was a good conversation. It was. I actually think we did a better job this time than we did last week. That's what we we should we I should do so. this twice. We will one week we'll practice <laughs> and then we'll come back and we'll do the actual show. You know, it doesn't. Who cares if we're like two or three weeks late on a news item? We just do. It's okay. Um, yeah. If we stop this and Tyler tells me, um, oh, Matt, I got a problem. Audacity didn't record. Then I'm going to beat him <laughs> over the head with his Macintosh. <laughs> I'm sending it back if that happens. <laughs> oh, there'll be a big dent on it. With this, with be like uh, the in, in Star Wars when Han gets like uh, in the um, where he gets like frozen or whatever. You know, like, like he's yeah. in metal. And that's how your Mac's going to look with your face in it. <laughs> if you tell me that hasn't been recorded yet. Okay, anyways, that is it for us this week. Before I go, I'd like to take and thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya.